welcome back. Um, we're on with something a bit different today. Um, as the title will say, I'm going to make a press tool. And when I say press tool, is basically what you'll see on race cars, roll cages and that type of thing is you'll see what's called a dimple press. And what that is, is literally it's a circle, but then it presses a chamfer onto the circle to basically reinforce the plate, make it strong again. You can buy them, but the, 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 for what they are, they're quite expensive, I feel, for what time it takes and the effort it takes. So today, we're going to get on the lathe and we're going to make the press tool. I'm going to show you the full process of what we do, how we do it, uh, what we need to look for, a bit of clearance measurements. You know, I'm just going to show that type of thing. It might be interesting to some, might not be interesting to others, but we're going to do it. So I'll grab the camera now. I'll show you exactly what a dimple die is because we've got Kurt's polo behind us that we're still working on. And he's, he's got a couple of dimple die press holes on the front wing. I'm going to show you what material we're going to use and then we'll get on the lathe and we'll have a mess around and see if we can make this press tool. So this here is what I mean by a dimple die is obviously you have this circle but then it presses this swage in and it reinforces basically the hole so we're going to make the tool to do this and what I've got is basically I've got a couple of pieces of just random off cut two two and a half inch steel we're gonna make the male make the female and we're gonna make the press tool so let's get the lathe fired up and let's get turning this tool This is what I've done. I've turned this down. So this is this between there and there is 30, I think 37. And between there and there is 27 because you can get a 27 mil hole saw. So obviously that'll fit into the, the hole saw end. And then this is going to be your taper to cause to basically to make the swage. And then I've left a little backstop because what can happen is when you press into onto a piece of flat steel, it can warp it. So this little edge here will kind of stop that and hopefully it will crush against the female side and it will flatten the panel back out. So let me put a taper on this, clean this up a little bit, this edge here so it's not as sharp and I'll get this all finished off now. So this is what the final turned product is and this is what we've done. So if you look, we've obviously took a little bit of the edge off just to make it a bit nice so you don't catch your finger. We've got a slight little, like, say, one milli return there. The chamfer, a drop, and then a flat edge. Now, the reason for everything is this little flat edge will keep the original drill hole round and square and nice and flush. So it won't distort the circle on the inside. And this flat edge is to press up against the panel because if you press this in, like I said, the panel can warp ever so slightly. So if you've got a slight flat return, when you press, that it'll press to this edge and it will hold it flat. So let me show you on, on the sample on Kurt's car. So there are the holes. So obviously, let me get this in there. It's a bit hard to do and concentrate. So that'll go in and that goes up to the die. But if you look, when you put that in some press, there's a slight little gap there. When you apply force, it'll make sure this panel stays flat. So that's that side done. That's the male side. So now I'm literally going to go on now with the basically the female side, which is a mirror image of this, but leaving a slight one milli gap for this chamfer to make the, um, the dimple. So let's get on with that. And then let's make sure we can get this sorted out. what i've done i've bored an hole and i've seen a piece of bar there's the exact diameter 
I would say slightly over. We're talking only like 0.2 over. So then that fits perfectly into there. And the reason for that is obviously once you've drilled your hole, you can line them up. That'll go up towards the piece of steel. And then you're going to push that to make the dimple. But so now basically I've got to put a chamfer on this edge to match that chamfer. So then when I do press them together, it makes it creates the uh, the dimple in the bar. So I've got quite a lot of room there to support the um, to support the material underneath to flatten it. Plus I've still got the return edge on this as I've said earlier on. So I think it should work all right. So I need to put the chamfer on. And I will say when you're making a tool like this, it does need to be. I wouldn't say exact size. It needs to be slightly bigger on this side like by a milli because you've got to take your material thickness into consideration doesn't matter if you're doing it on two milli steel or you know or one milli steel always put a bit of, a bit of clearance on just to assist it so i'm going to put a one milli clearance on this side so let's get that machined in and then let's test this so this is now kind of complete of what i need to do to test Need to clean these few little snags off, but it's going to get worse as it's pressed. But anyway, um, male side, female side. So obviously you're going to hole saw that size hole into your material. You're going to place that into the material on, on a press. And you're literally going to just go bang, 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 bang. And then press that dimple into it. It still has a very slight, I think, one to two mil clearance. So then basically the material can fold down and flatten out. So it's got a bit of, you know, uh, pressure leeway, but I think it's going to work. I would like to, in the future, put a self-centering punch in there and then maybe put it, you know, clamp it centre so I can put it in hydraulic press and not even have to hole saw it. I can just push it through and it'll push that hole and put the dimple in at the same time. But as it stands at the moment, I haven't really got time. I've got a job that I need to do with, with uh, a dimple die. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and bandsaw this off, bandsaw this off, and test it on a piece of aluminium. I'm going to literally just clean up all this now before I go, but that's going to work. That's going to work. Well, I hope it does. Let's now go and part it off and test it on a piece of aluminium. So we're now going to test this out. Hydraulic press. The two tools I've obviously made. I've now got a piece of 2 mil aluminium with a 27 mil hole in that I've done with a hole saw. So we've got to see if it works. So as I said, that's going to go on there. That's going to locate in there. And then we're going to press it down and see what happens. And fingers crossed, we will get that little taper we want that we're looking for for the, like, the dimple die. If that works, then I'll part everything off and literally just tidy the tools up themselves. So. Fingers crossed, we'll get somewhere. So let's get the, the handle. So that's it now bottomed out. Pressure off. It looks like it's worked, so let me get this out and we'll have a double look. And that there, is the finished job. Just strengthens it up, makes it look nice. The panel's still relatively flat. Yeah, seems to work. So that's that done. So back in my workshop, job's 100% complete. The job I've got in for this tool I can now get done. It's all done. Obviously, as you've seen, I've kind of hardened it now, heating it up to cherry to, to as hot kind of cherry as possible, dipped it in oil. It's not the best way to harden a material, but it kind of works and puts just a, a bit of a hardened surface on just so it lasts a bit longer. So as you can see, obviously there's the part. 
all done, all finished, and all works. So, very happy. I can get now on with the job in hand. Another job ticked off. So, signing off now. You know, just thought I'd bring something a little bit different rather than, you know, just making the tool and, and not showing you. Some people might be interested, some people may not. Just to give you a rough idea, to buy a dimple die tool, it's around 50, 60 pound. Material that it's cost me today, probably a tenner. Um, you know, a couple of my friends have uh, big engineering shops and I can just go and get off cuts for free, but it's about a tenner. And obviously a couple of hours on the lathe and a bit of messing around. So yeah, you know, is it cost effective to buy or to make? I don't know, but I'm, I'm a great believer in try and make everything yourself, try and, you know, hone your skills, you know, and, and, and have, have a go at doing this type of thing. Don't just automatically go and spend the money and, and buy these tools. If you've got access to this type of machinery, you can make them yourself. So again, something a little bit interesting, something I thought I'd show you. And another reason is uh, there's another YouTuber. If you don't follow him, please do. It's called uh, Auto Flock Motorsport, Raj. Good friend of mine. Unfortunately, he likes Fords, but we'll let that slip. And on his previous videos, I think last week before, he was doing the dimple dies for his roll cage and he lost all the footage. So I thought what better to do is to make the tool to show it how it works and you know to try and fill in the gaps for both you know for my subscribers and he could probably you know tag some of his subscribers in you know help helping friends out so thanks for watching we'll see you on the next project whatever that might be but thanks again take care